so over the years you've we just talked about your community and charitable work and uh giving back to the university especially through the alumni association foundation board chair of the board of regents so many different ways but what motivates you to get involved in the community and give back to texas tech well uh you know there's two words that describe me and one is passionate and one is intense and uh, that can be a positive and that can be a negative <laughs> to say the least it depends on what end of your you're on that but uh, i am very passionate i'm very passionate about our community in abilene very passionate about the bank and i'm very passionate uh, about my family for sure but very passionate about texas tech university and speaking of texas tech and giving back uh, recently well this year you and dean williams at the rawls college teamed up to uh, began the excellence in banking program and you really started off with a what at least I considered a bold and aggressive campaign to raise funds for that by a certain date do you want to give an update on that and how yes, it worked? Yes, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, by Bob Duncan's words it'd be bold and fundable and I, I, I love that uh, yes uh, you know uh, we uh, we really need that in in the state. We need uh, the banking industry needs students that are coming up that can take places because there's a lot of us that are going by the wayside one of these days, and so we've got to prepare for that. And there are two other schools in Texas that do a very good job of that. And so I continued to say, hey, we need to, to do this at Tech. We need to do this at Tech. And thank uh, you know I, I will tell you, Margaret and and jeff have been outstanding in uh saying yes we need to do that and so we talked about that in new york believe it or not uh uh at the basketball game that morning and uh it's it's come to being tech is uh doing that this fall but they also said uh we got to raise 10 million dollars to endow this program so uh uh, the true story is uh, I was going to get some seed money and get it going and then let them have it. And some of my friends in this room uh, decided they would put a challenge grant on it because uh, they know me too well. And a challenge grant means I have to, I had to get right in the middle of it and because I, I can't lose. Uh, and, and so uh, we, uh, we have passed the, the challenge. Uh, of ten million dollars, and uh, we will uh, we think we'll get to fifteen, which means that much more for scholarships and that much more for what we can do for the program. So you're, I know this is in your bio, but uh, and I'll repeat it. But chairman, CEO, and president, first financial bank shares, and first financial bank. More than 70 locations, and I don't mean to sound like a commercial here, but uh, more than 70 locations. That's all right. <laughs> I figured we could it, use it. I thought it might be. Uh, it's a big task. So, how did how did Texas Tech prepare you for first a 48 year career in this industry, but then to run an operation of that size? Well, I came to Tech very naive, uh, and probably uh, I was a great student in high school, but not prepared for college, and so. Uh, Tech totally changed my life, uh, and believe it or not, for those of you don't that don't realize this, I am really an introvert. Uh, and yeah, you're gonna laugh about it, but that's a true story. I came into tech a very much an infer, infer, introvert, and realized that you know I wasn't gonna make it in the business world as an introvert, and uh, uh, it very much helped me become an extrovert, and uh, become I went from a mediocre uh, student in my freshman years to four-point students in my senior years. During that time at Tech, what are, what are some of the things you think back on that some of your fondest memories? Well, uh, one of my fondest memories uh, happens to be a person that's here tonight, and that's Kent Hance. And uh, Kent, uh, uh, my, two, my two favorite uh, uh, chancellors are here. Uh, two of my favorite chancellors are here. And don't tell Ted I said that, Chad. <laughs> but uh, Hans, Hans was my law professor, and uh, uh, Bob was my classmate. Uh, 
we were in the same class. He was student body president of the class. And so uh, Kent, uh, I still remember in Kent's class, and I still have the book, and I wrote in the book, Hans is outstanding. Because you went to his class just to be entertained, totally entertained. <laughs> and I can tell you we have numbered all his stories, and I can, t I can say, Kent, Kent, tell number 54, and he tells number 54. <laughs> but uh, he was outstanding. And I, I will tell you, uh, on Bob, there's nobody that has more class than Bob Duncan. I spoke to a writer, John Maxfield. He writes for Bank Director Magazine, and you know him. He kept going and going with compliments. I said, tell me about Scott Deeser, and he kept going. I said, look, he's already got the honor. This is not a nomination. He's got the honor. But, he kept, but he, he's, I, I thought this was really good. Um, when I think of Scott, he has so much energy for a guy his age. Maybe... <laughs> I'm maybe gonna, backhanded. I'm kill him. That may be backhanded. Um, when I think of him, I think of the store Forever 21. <laughs> Scott Deeser is one of the finest bankers in the entire U.S., not opinion, proven by data. That's pretty strong. You don't have to respond to that. <laughs> I don't know what to say about <laughs> That's that. That's all right. That says it all. That says it all. So before, before you go, though, I do have to ask this. He did share this. Um, how does a person pull up to the airport, to the drop-off, get out of their car, truck, go in and board a flight and realize they left the car running <laughs> and the truck at the drop-off? How does, how does that happen? That is a true story. <laughs> <laughs> and that... <laughs> These guys, these guys know it. Uh, we went on a trip to Williamsburg, Virginia. And, uh, you know, in the Abilene Airport, you pull up to the airport, you unload the luggage, and I always got the kids in, everybody on the flight, you know, on, you know, checked in. And uh, what happened was, as we did that, uh, somebody came up to me and started talking. And they were calling our flight. And so, you know, I didn't even think... I had not even thought about that I left the car out in front of the airport. <laughs> and so we are flying back. I'm sitting next to Matthew from four days later, four or five days later. And uh, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I got to go get the car. And all of a sudden I thought, I didn't park the car. <laughs> and I start, I, I turn in this cold sweat. And I thought, it's, you know, it's going to be towed. There's no, you know, I, I just, and Matthew finally said, Dad, quit worrying about it, you know, quit worrying about it, because I was stressing out, totally stressed out about it. We get there, and the car is still sitting <laughs> in front where I left it, and it had been there the whole time. I called the mayor, and I said, he's here tonight, and I said, thank you for the free parking. He goes, free parking? I said, yeah, the free parking I got at the airport. And I told him that story, and you know, they had the they have the recording that comes, do not leave your car out front. It sat there for five days. <laughs> That's Abilene, Texas. <laughs> Scott, congratulations. Very deserving of this. Thank you.